Today, Sven Janusek is going to talk about just in time and Kanban. Hi, everybody. Let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this video lecture in which I will introduce you to the concepts of just in time and Kanban. Let's have a look at this photo. What do you see? I can see a heavily packed warehouse with lots of pallets, boxes, and God knows what. Is that good? Probably not. Let's assume you start working in this warehouse and one of your colleagues calls you. Hey man, I need this box, the one on top of all the other boxes. Can you bring it to me as fast as possible? Here's a forklift. Thank you. Well, have fun with your new job. Such an inventory is an illustrative example of waste. It takes time to find and pick up things you need. It eats up a lot of space and inventory space is money. It quickly leads to mistakes. And unless you're producing wine or whiskey, trust me, most of your materials will not get better by the time they stick around in a hall like this. Now, is there any other way of managing your production and logistics instead of stockpiling goods? Yes, thank God there is one. And it is called just-in-time production. What is just-in-time production? It is one of the main pillars of the Toyota production system. According to the Lean Enterprise Institute, it has three central elements. Continuous flow, tag time, and the pull system. Let's have a closer look at them. As its name already suggests, the just-in-time principle is about producing and procuring the right items at the right time and in the right amounts. One of the underlying ideas of just-in-time is continuous flow, or one-piece flow as it is also called, which means that you move on with one single product through every step of the process without grouping it to a batch. This leads to a reduction of work in progress to a minimum and it makes you continuously provide finished goods to the customer, avoiding such a disaster as we saw in the beginning of this video. Next is tech time, a concept that describes the rate at which goods need to be produced to meet customer demand. You not only want to continuously produce goods, but you also want them to leave your factory in the same rhythm as your customer demands it. And finally, there is the pull system, which is a way of producing goods that works backwards, meaning that visual signals from the downstream process trigger action in the previous process step. To clarify, there is a fundamental difference between push and pull systems. Whereas in push systems, products are pushed through the production, no matter if they are demanded or not, pull systems pull products into production only as they are needed or requested, preventing an overproduction of goods. I will demonstrate the difference with an example later on, but let me first introduce you to a specific method that lets you create a pull production. The method I am talking about is called Kanban. That is a Japanese term consisting of two words, Kan, which means visual, and Ban, which means card. More precisely, it is a scheduling system that aligns inventory levels with actual consumption. Once a certain amount of resources is consumed, the supplier gets a signal to produce or deliver a new shipment. This way, the rate of demand controls the rate of production. The signal is usually visualized with Kanban cards, containing all relevant information for the replenishment of material. Here is an example of a Kanban card. It contains information such as the name of the item, the item number, the quantity for a new order, the time it takes for a new order to arrive, the supplier, the responsible person, the place where the items are stored, and so on. Even barcodes can also be placed on Kanban cards to facilitate tracking or automatic invoicing. Kanban cards are usually made of cardstock and are protected in clear vinyl envelopes. Here is an example of a real Kanban card that is attached to a container. Okay, to demonstrate the effectiveness of Kanban and pull production, let's have a look at an example of push production first. Let's assume this is our factory and we would like to produce cars. What do we need? We need a body, an engine plus transmission, wheels, and let's say windows. The car body and the powertrain we can produce ourselves. But the windows and wheels we get from our supplier. To prevent some downtime, we want to have some safety stock. All right, now we want to produce five cars a week. In a push system, we do not have an agreement with our suppliers to steadily deliver new, new parts. So we need to plan ahead and therefore order the required parts. Once the new parts arrive, 
we have a high level of inventory as you can see. Okay, so let's start the production. It is Monday and we produce our first vehicle. On Tuesday, the second one. On Wednesday, the third one. On Thursday, the fourth one. And on Friday, the fifth. Our inventory has come down again, but now to be ready for the production in the next week, our planners have made sure that we get already the new parts. So here they are. We again end up with a full inventory and quite some chaos. Let's draw an interim conclusion. Push systems can lead to high inventory, capital lockup, little flexibility and high planning efforts. Now what is the deal with pull production? It is the same initial situation. We have a factory, want to produce five cars a week, have an internal supply of car bodies, engines and transmissions, and we get the wheels and windows from our suppliers. But what's different now is the structure of our material flow. We have less inventory, but we use Kanban cards. Here's how that works. We start our production and take the needed parts from our inventory and suddenly see two Kanban cards telling us that we need to order new parts. Interesting. So what do we do? Well, we tell our internal and external suppliers and in the meantime use the parts that are left in our inventory. Our internal supply is fast. So we get the parts and our Kanban cards back while we still produce our first car. Our external supplier has also sent his shipment, which will arrive the next day. Et voila, our first car is ready. On Tuesday, we finally get the windows from our supplier and move on with our production. As we notice, two new Kanban cards. What do we do? Yes, we again inform our internal and external suppliers. The engine and transmission are quickly delivered and also our wheel supplier has sent his shipment, which will now take two days to be at our factory. By the end of the day, we finish our second car. On Wednesday, we start the production of our third car and notice that we need new car bodies. So we inform our internal supplier, get the new parts plus our Kanban card and finish our third car. On Thursday, we finally get our wheels, start our production and notice three Kanban cards. We inform our suppliers who send us their parts and our fourth car is finished. And we reach the end of the week. New windows arrive, the production goes on, new bodies are ordered, they arrive and our fifth car is done. Now, what do we take away from that? In a pull system, we need less inventory space, less planning, less capital is locked up and we have higher flexibility. To sum it up, just in time is about producing and procuring the right items at the right time and in the right amounts. One piece flow, the synchronization of tech time with customer demand and the pull system help to establish just in time production. And finally, Kanban is a method that follows the pull principle by signaling demand to the previous process step and this way initiating the production or supply of new material. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Take care and goodbye. Bye.